Hey, I'm Robert Gardner. We're here at Table Tie at Lauderstein Conway Massage School. I believe it's Saturday, April 27th. We're working from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. We have like an hour for lunch. I'm walking the students through a lot of what I consider table tie, table tie massage, mobilizing clients, working clothes on, using deep compression, just trying to kind of shake them out of the torpor, give them new techniques they can use to astound their clients and really save their bodies as they work. And you figure out there's some sort of referred pain pattern that people come in and they say, I have this. And I go, really, where? And they're like, I always get this pain behind my eye. A lot of the students who come in work in a variety of facilities from spas to clinics. The work on a table is highly adaptable to different environments. We also wind up with a wide age range of students, probably from around, I think, about 65 down to about 20. They work in a whole host of environments. I just show them how to adapt the work easily into the work that they're already doing. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of working less and stacking body weight more. But it also depends on the kind of work you like. You probably like deeper work. Yeah. So you want her to lean in and stay. I want her to lean in and stay and then down. Yeah. Yes, and then like stretch. that. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm going to alter. No, I want you to do the same thing. I'm going to change something on her, but I want you to do the same thing. So when she brings you to your edge, like your comfortable edge, I want you to tell me. Like, in other words, tell me where you want her to hang out and just stay there. Right there? Okay. So now, what happens if your arm, what happens if you take your arm and leave it here? What do, what do you prefer? I think that sounds good. And what happens if you roll your arm open? You like that? Yeah, it's more intense. <laughs> if the person I'm working on, if I can't quite give them enough pressure, I'll sometimes add pieces like that to That's add nice. some more length. Okay. I'm in my lunge, and I'm just going to lean again, not really pushing or forcing. How are you? Good. Who work in the tech industry who are having problems with their cervical spine. They're having problems with their neck because of this. Me? They're coding. It's me, bro. Coding. You have, are you, what are you doing? Too much editing? Not? Too much sitting down, man. Too much smoking. We do a lot of work. I like that other way better. Uh -huh. yeah. And the thing is, it's, it's all variable. It depends on her body position and where she's at. And then in communication with you, she's able to vary it in a way that allows you to get what you're looking for. Usually, I'm just using movement to try to find out where there's a movement restriction. Hey, 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 just got out of work. It's about 1.30. Hopefully you're going to want to meet up for a drink. I need some R&R. No, it's just the bone up here. The bone in my, or the spine part in the scapula, those are still pretty far off. That's all muscle. It's just an easy 
easier, faster, more effective work. Whisper something in my ear. You have to do it in a way that doesn't compromise your body's integrity. I can take more, but okay. Take so, can you lean in again? I'm gonna add a little piece of this. And for some people, this will make all the difference in the world. This will go from like, eh, it's okay, to like, whoa. So, how's the pressure? That's good. That's good. Now, without slapping her, I want you to lift this arm and I want you to roll the arm around. Oh, like this? Yeah. Don't slap her. But then if you, I don't know where she if is. You, if you come up and over. Okay. You have all this oh, range like, you can lead yourself through. What, like what makes it better? Release kind of yeah, what makes it better for you? So now it's active. But in some cases, if I was working on someone and I couldn't quite deliver enough pressure, if I get them to move or mobilize, they'll put themselves and go, oh, right, oh, right there. That's good. Yeah. Now, if you did what we just showed, on both sides, how long is that? How, how long could you spend working on a client both sides doing what we just did, those two moves? Half hour. Easy. Half hour. Easy. Easy. Here's what's going to happen. Like I've told you, and you'll hear this again, I'll typically do this if, you know, be mindful of the facility you work in and what they're going to allow because I don't know exactly where all you guys work. If you're in private practice, you usually have the most freedom. If you're working for somebody else, I don't want you to throw like a monkey wrench in their works. But if I tell the client, is that Amy? Yes. Yeah. If I say, Amy, listen, lay down on the table just like you are. I'm going to move you around and see where we're going to work. I'll start doing this. I might do 10 minutes on one side, get a little feedback from her and go, listen, do you want to keep doing what we're doing or do you want to do Swedish and deep tissue? Because I don't want to want her to feel like she's not getting her massage. Does it make sense? Because if she feels like she didn't get her massage, she's going to go up to the front desk and complain and you're going to get in trouble, right? If she says, no, this is really good and you go, okay, you can keep doing this for 30 minutes. All you've done is the two things we've showed. That's half of an hour. You can still say, listen, do you want to take off your top and bra, lay down and do deep tissue for the rest of the session, or you just want to keep you know, with what we're doing? As long as they are happy with it, why does your boss care? And that's what's strange because we don't think of massage as being done clothed. There's a, a distinct difference between what we're selling the public and what we're actually delivering. People don't even know what time massage is, much less my branded name. We have to teach the clients that we work in a slightly different way. From the one standpoint, that's more challenging because they might not initially think of it as massage. We have to expand their parameters for what massage and body work is, one. Two, we have to do really effective work and they come right along. They do not care, especially if they're dealing with pain. So I go, I say, Amy, you're having problems right up here? Yes. 
Okay, is it from like doing work, like doing massage? Is it from like working at a desk? What do you think? From massage. From massage? Okay. Yeah. This area right here, is it like sharp and stabbing or is it just like a broad ache? It's a broad ache. Broad ache, okay. So 10's hospital, zero's no pain. What does it get to? Four. Okay. Yeah. Four means it's livable. It's, it's a really annoying boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, really annoying kids. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trick her into working on the front by working from the back. The first thing I do is come in and touch the area she's having problems with, which means I'm using fingertips very gently just to press along the paraspinals, along the rhomboids, up to the top towards the trapezius and la levator scapula up here, just to establish some basic contact. How did that feel, Amy? That felt okay. You did some things. <laughs> ah, just what, just what I got in, it, it felt okay. <laughs> so here's what's going to happen. I made that initial physical contact and then I would explain, listen, I think some of the muscles in the front are tight and it's leading to pain here. I would sit down and I want to show you this. When I do this, how does this feel, Amy? Uh, close. Close. <laughs> She's completely clothed. I'm completely clothed. I still have one foot on the floor, massage envy. If I put both feet up on the table, massage envy will fire me because legally in their contracts, you have to keep one foot on the floor. Here's what happens. Let me see your arm, Amy. I'm gonna drape her arm over mine. Listen, the problem you're having is it feel like that starts to pull into it? Pull into what, my shoulder? Into what you're feeling up here. Uh, yes. Yes. When clients come to us, we talked about they come to us for relaxation and pain relief. Do clients come to us for touch? My Boulder Bro clients who are CrossFitters will never go home and tell their wives, Robert helps me with my touch needs. <laughs> but I'm crawling on them, standing on them, like working on them. How's this, Amy? That feels good. Feels good? Okay. Does it feel better when I pull down towards your feet? Or if I would grab here and kind of pull back? Um, Pulling back, okay. Now, you'll notice I'm just giving her an option. I've actually got my thigh in position to, to bolster her, to prop her, so that when I pull her back, she knows that I'm not pulling her off the table. So I'm actually pulling her back onto my leg. How's that? That feels awesome. That feels awesome. That is much better than okay. Thank you for giving me that awesome on camera. If all you do is take what we're doing today and you work in an environment where this would be allowed, how would you feel about tacking 30 minutes of this clothes stuff on to an hour session? Doing 30 minutes of this. Would the clients fight you on it? You figure out how to integrate it and I think long term you should get the clients to go where you want to go. If you want to do mat work, you need to go towards the mat. If you want to do longer table sessions, you need to steer them towards longer table sessions. How many of you prefer doing 30 minutes? Most therapists, yeah, they, they, it's, it's like enough time. It's like I have, I have a spot, I can work on one or two spots maybe in 30 minutes, like just a problem area. And it always felt like it wasn't enough. When I worked at a chiropractor's office, I told people I felt like I was putting a Band-Aid on a tumor. Because they came in and it was like, man, I could do so much more. It would be so much better for them if I could just get them to extend the session longer but the insurance wouldn't pay for it. People still contact me periodically because I do a lot of chronic pain work and they say, do you accept insurance? And I say, no. And they say, but I can't afford it. And I say, Time Massage Jam happens every Thursday night in Austin. It's $5. Almost every Thursday night for seven years, I've been teaching people, the public and therapists, for free. because it has to be on display. People have to be able to receive it. You have to change the marketplace. You have to work on enough bodies. You have to give it to enough therapists to scale it out, allow people to have it. We don't have a mat-based culture. Time Massage Jam is a, I can be in horror of yeah. whatever. <laughs> or if you know, people are doing yoga or just some sort of movement-based practice, I think really helps what we're trying to build. Do you guys have any other comments or any other questions about what we just did.
good. So. And when they finished, I got up and went, oh my God. Semispinalis capitis, trapezius, splenius capitis, levator scapula, splenius surfaces. That's what I'm hitting. Um, what if people do have cervical fusions? What do we do about that? Yeah. We're, we're not gonna bend titanium. Herniations and bulges above and below where the titanium is. Because the spine is supposed to move. The titanium says, no, don't move. We're having a problem here. We need to stay off the nerves, right? So here's the thing. I'm still gonna work around their titanium. I'm gonna ask them for more feedback. I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious. I still want to work that area because how are the muscles right above the titanium? Uh, yeah, he, he shook his head no and got sad. And I'm like, yeah, it needs work. <laughs> and then what happens to the muscles above and below? I often find that they're tight. Um, I don't really change it that dramatically. Um, because I'm just delivering a compression and I'm just hanging out and getting feedback from them. I don't want to put something into their nervous system that they don't like. If they say, listen, you know, I had a neck, it makes me really uncomfortable. I don't like that compression thing. Then I would just do more standard neck work, a lot of tractioning and lengthening, like stripping with my fingers, just because I have to make sure they're comfortable. It's not about what I think they need. It's about communicating with the client and giving them what they want. You're just gonna hang upside down off my feet. It's totally fine. It's gonna traction your entire spine. Yeah. You're totally safe. I'm just gonna hold you in the air. I'm gonna lightly mobilize you. You can do that? Yes. Oh, I thought that was like a myth or something. You can really do that. Yes. Okay. And I'm probably of your size, like just about perfect. Okay. Now I do it very safely, okay. very cautiously, very protective. Like you don't want to hurt somebody. You're not used to being upside down. Okay. And here's the bigger piece, and this is what I find absolutely hysterical: is therapeutic flight massage. <laughs> We got an air show coming up. That would go really good with that. There's nothing better. And the thing is, because I'm still mobile, I get to like take yeah. So this is more strength when I open it? Yeah. <laughs> Every time I push forward, it's like you can move further back. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> twist the, the foot while, while twisting the knee because then you're gonna like snap my knee if it's like a lot of pressure. So we're nearing the end of the first day of table time. I was working with the students and because of the table height, I couldn't really use my knee in the gluteals the way I typically would from the side. So I just decided to show the students how to get on the table to be able to use bilateral compression on both sides of the gluteals, which means it doesn't look like massage anymore. The students are actually on the table, digging knees down into the gluteals, using what I keep telling them is a much larger elbow to deliver pressure that's more effective for the clients and easier for them to deliver. We just wind up in this unique cultural situation where they need to be cautious about how they use it and the facilities they work, and they have to make sure that the equipment can maintain the weight. For a lot of people, they think of massage as four main things in my experience, and that's table, cream, glide, and nudity. 
I have a tendency in my work to take away all four. There isn't table excess oil, there isn't uh, cream and a glide, and then the person's clothed, they're not naked. So you wind up with a totally different sense of leverage and mobility when you're working with someone. I say that my work resembles more like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu than it does massage because I'm sometimes putting people in joint mobilizations and locks and then using my knees and feet uh, for various sorts of compression. In a normal massage, you wouldn't get on the client. When I use my full body weight through my knees or my feet, I'm able to distribute weight that can greatly assist the, the clients. Uh, strengthen my legs to keep you on your body and push it down. I'm trying to right Instagram. <laughs> If I scream, that means you're hurting me. So I'm not on the SI joint because I'm not on the sacrum. Yeah. I'm really dead square in the gluteals, uh -huh. and it's almost dead center, dead center on piriformis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, over over the biggest part of the group, just making sure that we're being uh, cognizant of the body yeah. landmarks. We don't want to get into like the greater trochanter or anything like that. Uh, too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I But otherwise, you can ask, it, tell yeah. us, give her feedback. It's not at all. Okay. Start to palpate. You know, actually. Move your hips. There you go. Just stop saying that. Yeah. Do you not feel it? There you feel it. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're used to doing massage with your hands, it's very different. It takes a little time, and it's also like, okay, I'm pressing in the calves. Where in the calves? There. I'm not sure. No? Try your other little See if it makes a difference. Yeah, I told you this, is, this feels like this. Oh, no, it doesn't. But whether it does it feels like you're... You're like strumming my ropes, is what it feels like. That's what, that's what, yeah. Oh, that's what it felt to you too. The students right now are working on the quadriceps, and I was having them use the fleshy part of their shin, not the bone, but the broad part, to be able to apply pressure to the quadriceps in a, like a completely new way. Most of them have never used their legs and knees and shins to work on people. Uh, we had a great day today. Tomorrow, um... There's a lot of different options. I'm probably at some point going to go over pretty in-depth detail about the hands and arms because massage therapists have problems with those. We've also not covered much in the way of the rotator cuff, and I'd like to get a little bit more into sideline and like opening the chest in some new innovative ways after we did the basic work today. More so, I think what is happening in you know 2019, social media is just a part of fabric of society now, and the way that people keep in touch. It means that people friend me on Facebook. They're friends with me for three years. They never even have a private message conversation with me, but they're still sort of keeping track of what I'm doing, what I'm teaching. And then if they're sort of your fan, your follower, they download a workbook, they're on your you know email list, they just slowly kind of work into your funnel as a business. Um, most of what I do is about connection. When I'm teaching, I always try to improvise as much as possible while giving the students a sequence they can use, something they can work with when they leave class. But I always try to respond to their questions. And when the student asks me about, you know, what does the assessment look like? How do I deal with clients? It, I just took 15 minutes to just show, this is what it looks like. Here's how I work on the client. This is the problem they're having. They're having issues with their hands and arms. It might be brachial plexus related. I was going into their arms. Most massage therapists are having problems with their forearm flexors and extensors. They come in telling me they're having arthritis or carpal tunnel syndrome. I have to help them to be able to continue working on clients adequately. 
and also be able to save their hands in the process. So I essentially showed them some very deep forearm flexor compression that leads to an arterial tourniquet. People will feel numbness or tingling in their hands because we're working on their broad forearm so broad, so big, so deep, it starts affecting cardiovascular supply down the hand. But We'll probably find out after this um, how the students respond, like how their hands feel. By the end of the day, the students will be finishing up. They're going to have a bunch of tools that they can throw into their sessions very rapidly to help people with pain. Um, this specifically deals more with like carpal tunnel syndrome, but a lot of people who are having the chronic issues that we see, like upper back and neck pain, what people will commonly call sciatica or piriformis syndrome, like pain running down their back and leg, they're going to be able to address those issues very quickly and easily while minimizing strain. The body is so, so much more important because, you know, when we think about mental health and, you know, our thoughts, so when Heidi is uh, dealing with the, the, the CrossFit gym in South Austin, Heidi, how did the CrossFitters take to the gym? What's that? How did the CrossFitters take to the gym? Yeah, uh, yeah it's great because they are broken people. So <laughs> <laughs> and they like it's all the time. It's nice because then they, they learn like broad structures. I mean, for me, I can kind of tailor it to that type of audience because they have very similar issues that they're dealing with, but they love it because we just do Is this okay? quads, glutes, and infraspinatus over and over and over, yeah. but it's like super, and like a lot of flexor work too from all the gripping. Um, but yeah, they love it because it's cheap. Yeah. But it's also a very in, inexpensive so. way of like them learning how to work on each other. And here's what I think happens. I've had therapists like in a massage school say, but, but if you teach people how to work on themselves, they won't come see you. <laughs> Oh, they still see me. Yeah. Because they need dedicated focus but, work also. But if you, but if you give it away, yeah. and you go, yeah. here, well, no, I'm going to show your wife how to do it to you. Yeah. And you do it again and again and again and again and again, they wind up becoming clients. <laughs> uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Is there a scarcity mindset in the massage community? No, 10,000 people are moving into all that therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would say, I would say yes. Yeah. But you know, there's a lot. There's a lot of factors that go along Is with that. Room or like a for everybody to eat there. I, I think so. Many, many, many times over. The problem is if everybody's trying to sell massage, everything looks the same. That's what the real problem is. There's there's a lack of branding. You know, like I don't think um, one musician does the musician get mad at another musician. Does Kanye get mad at Jay Z and vice versa because Kanye's fans aren't going to listen to you know like their their music? No, and that's that's a sort of mentality. Some things. Yeah, it will come out sometimes. That's for sure. Can you do a close up? Do it. Do it. So that's your don't show your arm too much. It's better like no yeah. How's the pressure? It's great. On which part? Forearm or on the oh, back? Oh, um, okay. back, yeah. This feels good right here. I mean, you could do more, but I don't, I feel like, I'm, I'm not, yeah. need, I'm not like needing for more. Um, That's nice. That way. And in this case, I think this is going to be a perfect one for my thigh because I just can't, because of arm length and like the table. I think this is going to How's that? Now, if I go just a little bit back towards the wrist or towards the fingers? Okay. Right there? Now, up towards the thumb or down towards the pinky? Does it feel more up towards the thumb? Right there? Okay. Now, can you open your hand out underneath my elbow? There you go. What I noticed was as my sessions got longer, as the compressions got deeper, I would get the Massage Envy client, they would go to Massage Envy like once a month because that's what their payment plan or whatever their membership is, right? They started switching out and they would come see me for a month or once a month and they'd say, I know it's a little bit more because you know I'm paying for three hours, but they'd say, I, like my symptoms go away for like three weeks after I they just start to kind of come back when I come in for the next session. Because what I did is, from a marketing standpoint, I think it's advantageous, especially with chronic pain, to put them on a treatment plan. 
I never operate a revolving door, and I, I make sure to, well, the first time I work with you and say, listen, it is to my benefit if I work on you once to never work on you again because you're better. If I could do that. That's probably unlikely, but I'm always going to try to show you how to work on yourself. I'm going to educate you about how to work on yourself. If you say, I don't want to work on myself, I go, I don't know if you're an ideal client for me, but I'm always trying to get rid of the clients, and then I wind up getting more of them. Because when I help her, that Google review sounds like a medical issue. It sounds like something other than a massage. I, I think the students receive it better than they did maybe in the past. They've come to accept that social media is just a a part of overall marketing now, which maybe five years ago was a little bit different. Also, I just continue to tweak the message and make it as palatable to the audience as possible. I include a little bit of marketing in most of my classes because not only is the body work different, but to really build a thriving business, you almost have to work doing what I teach currently for yourself. It's very challenging to integrate the bulk of the techniques, especially mat-based, in a facility because facility owners don't look at it as massage and they're very confused because they're used to selling that succinct service. I absolutely love teaching. I love being able to work with students and I have like the, the greatest good in mind for them. I am a horrible, horrible critic. I will forever look at what I do, think it's not good enough, but I try to maintain enough um, sense of like pat on the back for a job well done while also looking on my work tweaking it making it better to be able to connect with the students more and make the work more palatable to them to make it an easy transition from maybe a lighter form of work that looks more like massage towards something that I think can be a little bit deeper and more effective for clients and pain. Okay, if you total them all together, it's probably still under 100, but if you're talking about table tie, it's always two days, intro is always three days. So, yeah. Quite a bit, a lot of hours. Just the subscription service, the last two years, there's like over 300 hours of footage. And like when you talk about table tie, there's probably like eight copies of just this class on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, we're cheesing, right? Yeah, okay, absolutely. We're cheesing in a funny way. <laughs> photos. Just, <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Candace regularly, she runs a time massage gym in San Antonio. Oh, okay. So I'm talking to her about teaching there. Um, I haven't like organized anything yet, but I am in San Antonio frequently. So just contact me, and again, I'll have links for like the time massage gym so you can kind of follow along. Yeah, okay, cool. sure, nice, all right. <laughs> it's been a long couple days. And my voice will like the rest as well. Why? <laughs> yes, I'll see you.